All right, guys, so this is week two of my video blog. If you tuned in with me last time, uh, we went through a few steps of changing our lives and self-growth. I was challenged by a buddy to, you know, say what I've learned and just kind of put it out there. And if I can just help one person, you know, I consider that a success. So I appreciate y'all watching with me. Um, so first thing that we talked about last week was taking a look at what's pleasurable in our life. Fast, quick, easy things. The things that aren't really leaving us or directing us, if you will, in the right direction to where we want to be in life. And changing it for the things that are going to make you happy. Le leaving a legacy on this world for your family. Changing the world for millions of people around the world. And then the big thing here is knowing that if you're not going to do it, nobody else is. Your dream was put in your heart by our Creator. And that dream is your dream. And you can't depend on your neighbor, on your brother, on your sister, or anybody else to try to fulfill that dream for you. This is your dream. And it's up to you to step up to the plate to make it happen. You know, they say the richest place in the world is actually the graveyard. There you're going to find books that weren't written, inventions that never came to life, ideas that we'll never ever see before or ever see again because they're gone. And I'll tell you this, and I hate to sound gruesome about it, but we're dying every day. We're just getting one step closer to that. I'm not telling you to fear death. I'm just telling you that if this is your dream, today's got to be the day. Don't wait until tomorrow. Do something today. What will you look back on tomorrow to today and thank yourself for, for what you did that's going to help you out? That was productive and leading you in the right direction to your dream. And that's what you need to be asking yourself every day. What did I do today that I'm going to thank myself for tomorrow to lead me to what I really want in life? If you're doing that, you're on the right track. So we're defining what's pleasurable, what's happy. I wanted you to write down what you really wanted in life, everything that you really, truly desired, and knowing that it's possible. And I'll tell you right now, it's going to be hard. It's absolutely going to be hard, but I don't have to tell you that. You know that if you have this dream in your heart and you've had it before and you've worked towards it, it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. It's going to knock you down. So when it knocks you down, you better have your why. And your why better be stronger than what's knocking you down. If your why is the car and the house, and I think it's okay to dream for those things. Actually, I, I want you to because you deserve to have it. But if that's your why, it's not going to be strong enough to get your ass back up when, when life knocks you down. Because I promise you, you're going to get knocked down. But if you're dreaming and knowing that your why is going to be the legacy that you're going to live, and the people around this world that are depending on you and the lives that you're going to change and make better just because of you and nobody else can do it except for you. When life knocks you down, the bank doesn't come through, people don't show up to a meeting that you had, somebody says you can count on me and then you can't. That is going to get you up when you get knocked down. Les Brown says, if you get knocked down, land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. And I'm a firm believer in that. So what's the next step? Well, the next step is the first step. Take the first step. Just do it. Whatever the dream is in your heart. If you say that you want to end hunger in your community, but you have no idea how to go about it, take the first step. So what's the first step? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's start with the half step. Ask God. Just say, hey, I'd like to end hunger in my community. I know this is in line with your wills and your values and what you would want for us. And I'm going to work, out, work hard, just like you're going to give it to me, to help, to help our community. And I thank you for that. And when you're done asking, get to work and knowing that it's coming. In full faith, knowing that it is on its way, that you're going to get the help that you want. The Great Secret says, if you're going to drive from the East Coast to the West Coast, and you're going to do it in, the, in the pitch black the entire way. That you're going to have your headlights on and you're only going to be able to see 200 feet in front of you. But as you drive 200 feet, the next 200 feet are going to unravel. And then after that, the next 200 feet are going to unravel. So you don't have to see the full steps. You just have to see the first step. The first step is that first 200 feet. But after you cross that, the next 200 feet will unravel. And that's how life is. 
A lot of people are anxious and have anxiety about not seeing the second, third, and fourth steps. Step out. Trust the God that loves you that the second, third steps are going to come. And do something for your life that's not only just going to help you, but it's going to help the millions of people around this world that are depending on you. If you don't do it, nobody else will. I'm telling you, we need you. We need that dream in your heart that was placed there by divine ideas into you that this is what you need to do to help the world. And we're depending on you. So take the first step. Ask for help from God. Ask if you can have it. And then work with full faith that it's going to happen. Just like in the Bible says, don't just pray for rain and keep praying for rain, keep praying for rain. Pray for rain and get out there and work your field as if you already know it's coming. That's when the rain comes. That's faith. That's faith in action. Don't just have faith that's coming. Get out there and actually work as if you know it's coming. You ask God that said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. It's coming. That's a promise. God's never broken a promise before. Get out there and work in full faith and it's going to happen for you. So take the first step. Once you're out there working, you don't have to have, if you're trying to end this end hunger for the community, you don't have to have buildings around the city right off the bat. You just need a grocery bag and you know, know where the homeless community is around you. You don't need to know every single homeless community, just a small portion. Get out there and just start the small steps. You're going to learn. You're going to fail your way to the top. Just like last time we were talking. You're going to make mistakes. Make them small. Make it small when you have one bag of groceries that you're trying to feed a, a homeless community and learn from it. And work your way to the top. And then that way when you're at the top, you've gained all the knowledge you need to know to be able to make this thing a dream come true. Not just for you, but for the people out there that are depending on you. That's the dream in your heart. Make it happen. If you were all of a sudden the next day granted with buildings around the city, but you had no knowledge, you're going to make mistakes there. And those are going to be a lot more costly than just starting at the bottom and working your ass off for it. And I promise you, the harder you have to work for it, the better you are. And by having nothing when you start, you're actually blessed. The people that were given everything, that had the trust fund and, and the easy money and were handed a business, that's called comfort. And that's the worst thing anybody could ever have in this world. If you're comfortable, it's a lot easier to stay comfortable. But if you have some hardships and some, some things that are bearing down on you and pushing you, those are the world changers. And I'm going to tell you right now, you are no different than anybody else in this world that's ever come before you or ever will come. Henry Ford, Walt Disney, Steve Jobs, Thomas Edison, Ben Franklin, we can go on for days, Sylvester Stallone, Tony Robbins, everybody has a story of heartache and triumph and, triumph and obstacles that they over had, had to overcome to get to where they were going. What's your story going to be? All right, I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks.